Joe Biden is going to be part of the Biden administration's task force aimed at reuniting children. It makes sense because she is a teacher, so she's shown a vast interest in children. And that is quite, quite a stark contrast <clears throat> from former First Lady Melania Trump. Now, first of all, we've talked about this plenty of times. There's about 3,000 children who got separated by the Trump administration in their family separation policies, where they were arresting and charging the parents with criminal conduct of trying to cross the border and keeping children in separate facilities. And there's approximately 3,000 children who have no idea where their parents are anymore. Their parents wow. have disappeared. So Joe Biden has put together a task force to relocate the parents with these children who are basically now foster kids or orphans. We don't know uh -huh. where these parents are. We don't know if they're in the United States. We don't know if they're in Guatemala, in <clears throat> Honduras, in Mexico, if they're alive, if they're dead. Nobody knows what happened to these parents. So there's a task force that now is being put together by the U.S. government to reunite the children with their parents. Hopefully, hopefully they can find parents. Now, if you right. remember Melania Trump, what a contrast between Jill Biden, who is going to be on the task force, and Melania Trump, who wore a $39 Zara jacket when she went to visit the children who were separated didn't really say anything about it other than she felt bad for them. And she wore this jacket that says, <laughs> I really don't care, do you? I remember when we first saw this, we thought it was a snub at her oh. husband. And we said, yeah, you go, Melania, you snub your right. husband with that sign. But it turns out it was not a snub of her husband. It was a snub of the news. She could absolutely care less about these children. And it turns out she was an enabler of her husband, Donald Trump. In an interview, yeah. in an interview on ABC, well after this whole incident of people were wondering, what did that message mean? She admitted what it meant. She wrote, it's obvious that I didn't wear the jacket for the children. I wore the jacket to go on the plane and off the plane. And it was for the people and the left-wing media who are criticizing me. And I want to show them, I don't care. You can criticize whatever you want to say. It will not stop me to do what I feel is right. Yeah, what is right is go visit some kids in jail, smile right. at them, and leave. That ain't right. It was rightful criticism. You know, and the jacket spawned a whole news cycle on its own, drawing attention away from the objective of Melania, who said she was going to visit the children to see if they were doing well, to public perception of what is she talking about. And it obviously was a public perception that she didn't care. And she admitted it. Yeah. I'm just excited to see a first lady in the news for something positive again. I really missed it. Uh, it's, it's insane how uh, the last one was, you know, our forever first lady, Michelle Obama. And the fact that Melania tried to come out and talk about bullying when she was married to the actual bully didn't really even show face like as much as you know, Michelle did or any of the others. So I'm super excited to see Dr. Joe Biden come out and represent for the country as a classy first lady. It lends visibility to the task force. It makes it more important. It makes it look like the Biden family takes this very important. Now, hopefully, I don't know what Jill Biden will be able to add to actually finding children, but I'm sure she's a smart woman. She has a doctorate. Yeah. But what it does is it brings back the visibility of what happened to these children. It brings back the visibility of, we need to find these parents. So if anything, it just brings publicity to all of this. If Jill Biden had not joined the task force, we probably wouldn't even been talking about it, let alone talking about it okay. as the first topic of our conversation today. Right, exactly. Yeah. 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 Joe Biden is expected to sign an executive order that would set up his goal of admitting tens of thousands of refugees to the United States. Donald Trump, during the Trump administration the last year, refugees went down to zero, literally zero. There was a cap of 15,000 that were put in, but they literally admitted nobody. During the campaign, Joe Biden pledged to increase refugee admissions nearly tenfold <clears throat> to 125,000 people. It's unclear whether he's going to reach 125,000 in 2021, given the COVID pandemic but at least it's a lofty goal that he is going to restart admitting families 
and people who are refugees and have nowhere to go and are escaping extreme poverty or uh, wars or wherever they may be that they're in harm. So that's a nice thing that he's doing. He also declared yeah. today, Joe Biden, that it is climate day at the White House. Today is climate day at the White House, he says, which means that today is jobs day at the White House. He signed the executive order on tackling the climate crisis at home and abroad. It instructs the director of national intelligence, Avril Haines, to prepare a national intelligence estimate on the security implications of the climate crisis, establishes the National Climate Task Force, commits to environmental justice, kicks off development of emissions reductions targets, and he's going to do a lot about climate. I think climate, immigration, social justice, tax reform, health care, we're going to see a better America in the next four years. Certainly, yeah. I think we're going to see science come back to the White House. I don't know how many times we talked about that. Remember when there was uh, rallies in Washington, D.C. about the climate crisis and people were being interviewed and said, I can't believe that I have to protest in favor of science. Right, right. Science and yeah. facts. Yes, exactly. Science and facts. Correct. Finally coming back and to the White facts. House. Good point, Yo-Yo. Do you do anything with <laughs> stocks? No, but I've been hearing a lot about what's going on. With and GameStop. Some trifling stuff. With GameStop. GameStop. And Robinhood, yeah. I think. That's yes, that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a day trading yeah. platform. Yeah. Right. All my friends have been talking about this. It's basically going to end yeah, up being... Yeah, uh, Robinhood too, yeah. Yeah, it's basically going to end up being a Ponzi scheme. Meaning, I mean, not a scheme because there's not one person in charge of it, but it's going to be, it's a bubble that's going to explode. So mm. w what happened, do you understand what happened or you're not sure what happened? No, no, no. I, I want to know. Okay. I want to know exactly so, what happened. So happens. GameStop is, is, a, is a company that sells games in malls. Nobody's yes. going to malls. And really, the reality is anyone who, who, you know, knows anything about gaming, I don't, but I see my son all the time, game all yeah, day long. it's a big thing. Yeah, right. Um, anyone who knows anything about gaming is you don't need to have, go to a store and buy games anymore. You can download everything. So yes. GameStop- Not like that, that from when we grew up. Correct, <laughs> correct. As a matter of fact, my son, when we just moved, <clears throat> He gave me all of his, you know, uh, all of his game, you know, boxes and said, I don't really need them. We'll put them in the closet in case I ever want to go back. But I download everything now on the Internet. So, yep. who's, so who's going to GameStop anymore? Nobody. And who's walking uh, through malls right now? Nobody. Nobody. So GameStop, just like the other, the other thing, the other, the other stock that's going through the roof, AMC, which is the movie theaters. We talked about that yesterday. So nobody's going to movies because the movie theaters are closed and nobody's going to GameStop because nobody needs to buy games anymore. You download it. And anyway, nobody's going to malls anyway. Stream things. Right. right. So, yeah. so these are companies that are dying or dead companies. So like Blockbuster. Like a Blockbuster, exactly. Yeah. So huge, huge investment funds, hedge funds, they are betting against the stock. And how you bet against the stock is you short it. That's called shorting a stock, where you yeah. sell stock and you you buy back stock at a lower at a you you sell stock that you you borrow stock that you sell that you don't own, and then you have to you have to buy back the stock at a lower price to make money. So in other words, you're still buying low and selling high, but you're doing it in the opposite direction. You're selling first and then buy it, but it's the low. same as you, as the stock is going down. But if the stock is going up, you are getting totally screwed because you bar, you sold stock that you don't own, you borrowed it. And now uh -huh. you got to go back and buy the stock at a higher price to repay right. back the person <laughs> who you borrowed the stock from. So okay. it's a very risky bet when you short stocks, it's very got risky, you. but made sense for these big hedge funds to short these stocks because they felt who's going to GameStop? Who's going to AMC movie theaters? Well, apparently there's some internet chat rooms and people said, you know what? Let's screw these big hedge funds and let's just start buying the stock. And it just went 
from small people talking to bigger people talking to bigger people talking to bigger and bigger groups of people talking saying we're going to buy GameStop. We're going to buy AMC. So when you buy stock, it's supply and demand like anything else. If everybody's yeah. buying, the stock will go up. If oh. everybody's selling, the stock will go down. Stock will go down. Okay. But everybody's buying not because of the fundamental of the underlying company. That's why you buy the stock. You look at the fundamental of the underlying company. You say, this company is, good, is worth more money than what the stock is selling right now. And I'm right. going to buy it because somebody's going to want to, I'm going to be able to sell this stock to somebody in the future because this company is going to be worth more money. But that's, right. not, that's not what is happening with GameStop and that's not what is happening with AMC. The companies are worth less and less every day but their stock is going through the roof thousands and thousands of times return just on supply and demand. People keep buying and buying and buying. Okay. So now there was one hedge fund uh, that made a $5 billion bet on shorting the stock, but because, but because they, they had to go back and buy the stock at a much higher price, they lost $5 billion. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Meanwhile, five so the instant, yeah, five billion dollars. So the the institutional wow. Wall Street people, who are usually the ones who screw the little guy, it has now been <laughs> opposite. turned ooh, opposite. Ooh, I like that. It is now the opposite. It's the little guys in the chat really rooms good. who screwed the big institutional investors. It's the small guy who got back at Wall Good. Street. And Good. they're all now what's gonna happen is yeah. I don't know what day it's gonna happen. Maybe tomorrow, maybe Monday, maybe Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. But one day it's gonna happen. The stock the GameStop and the AMC stock is going to tank. Why is right. it gonna tank? Because at one point at some point, A, people are gonna cash out their profits. And when you cash out your profits, you gotta sell your stock to somebody but they're gonna run out of people to sell stock to because it's artificially inflated. It's supply and demand. Right. So oh, because it's right. artificially inflated and people wanna sell out their stock and get their money out, every, it's like a run on a bank when a bank is, <clears throat> when a bank is going out of business. Everybody goes to run to take their money out. It, it all automatically, the bank will go out of business because they ran out of money to give to everybody. So it's the same so, thing here. There's, there's gonna be, everyone's gonna go look to sell their stock because it's not, it doesn't, it, the stock, the stock price doesn't, doesn't match the value of a, of a, of a company that's going out of business. Right. And so, when, so and when, that. and when that happens, the stock's going to tank. It's going to go all the way back to where it should be. I just don't, nobody knows what day that's going to happen. That's the million dollar question. If you knew what day it's going to happen, you'd be a billionaire. So what I've been hearing, like with my friends, that what they were talking about, that's why I said I've also heard that there were some trifling things. Um, I heard that Robinhood and TD uh, Ameri Ameritrade or something have been restricting trading of well, GameStop. Well, that's, we're going to talk, we're going to talk about that right now. I just wanted to. Okay. So that, that's yeah. what I was hearing. Right, the mo like, right. I didn't even know about like everybody. So, buying, so, that, so that's what I so didn't what, hear, but so I what, heard about right. that. So what happened today is Robinhood and some of the other trading platforms, they stopped the trading on the stock because they realize that this, these stocks are not trading in reality. They're trading based on people saying, let's just keep buying the stock to bid it up and screw Wall Street people. Right. That's really literally what's going on. And plus people are making millions and millions and hundreds, maybe even hundreds of millions of dollars. So where wow. the Wall Street people got annihilated the individual guys all over <laughs> the world and not made not even be in the United States. They're all, they, they turned the entire game upside down. So, wow. so who controls what is, is right. the little guy control all the stocks or do the big institutional hedge funds con control? Of course, the big institutional hedge funds. So right. somebody so somewhere, somehow, who knows, <laughs> You know, because I'm not privy to any of these conversations. Says, right. <laughs> calls up somebody who calls up somebody who says, this has to stop now. And got all of these trading platforms to say, we're not going to allow, we're not going to allow the selling on this stock anymore so that this stock can come back to reality. 
And who's, who's making those decisions? It's the Wall Street people. It's the hedge funds. It's the that people who back these apps. Who do you think put the money into these apps? Other Wall Street companies. So they say, you know what? We're now going to go back against the little guy. It's Wall Street versus the little guy. <clears throat> that's where basically what's going on right now. Right. So uh, that's what happened today. Now, what's interesting, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow with this stock. Uh, what's interesting is uh, Senator Ted Cruz and Democratic uh, Representative Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez briefly agreed that Congress should get involved and investigate this decision for Robinhood and some of the other stock trading platforms to stop the trades on GameStop. Now, uh, there's also been a class action lawsuit against Robinhood and some of the other trading platforms. This class action lawsuit may put these trading platforms out of business. That started today. Lawyers got involved within hours of this happening. So AOC, AOC writes, this is unacceptable. We now need to know more about at Robinhood app's decision to block retail investors from purchasing stock while hedge funds are freely able to trade the stock as they see fit. As a member of the Financial Services Committee, I'd support a hearing if necessary. So what's happening now is the individual guy can't trade in this stock anymore, but the hedge funds still can. Then Ted wow. Cruz, then Ted Cruz joined AOC. Apparently Ted Cruz follows AOC's tweets. You know Ted Cruz, right? He's the senator from yeah. Texas. He's the one who supported Donald Trump. He's the one who was at the rally with Donald Trump. He's the one who was saying that Trump had the election stolen from him. That Ted Cruz from Texas, he wrote, I fully agree to AOC. So now we have a moment in time when both AOC, who's far left, and Ted Cruz, who's far right, are agreeing on something, which is the Wall Street hedge fund guys are screwing the little guys now back. Right. All right. But AOC brought up a very, very valid point. You know what her response was to Ted Cruz? Yeah. She writes, I'm happy to work with Republicans on this issue where there's common ground, but you almost had me murdered three weeks ago, so you can sit this one out. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, oh, wow. Is that great? Wow. Oh, wow. Is that great? Yeah, that, is, I that could be I I, that her. could be one of the best. I I don't even. We're only in January, and I, I'm I'm going on record. That could that's be one of the, that's one, top ten tweet of the year, and we're only in January. Yeah, yeah I I'll put my money yeah. on that as well. Huh? Shot him down. I I, so we'll see. My my two cents. If you have two cents, stay out of it. You're gonna get clobbered. Right now. That's my two cents. Now, according to statistics from the John Hopkins University, there are now over 101 million coronavirus cases worldwide. Uh, nearly 2.1 million people have died. Only half of the COVID-19 vaccines delivered mm. to U.S. states have been used, but Biden administration officials say some of that is being reserved for second doses. CVS has started to offer vaccinations in select stores in Indiana, Massachusetts, New York, and Puerto Rico. Meanwhile, Oklahoma is trying to return the state's $2 million stockpile of hydrochloroquine, which has been touted by Donald Trump as a treatment, but turns out does nothing. That's what's going on in coronavirus news. Wacky World News Thursday. We go around the world and our crack team, our crack crew on Bradshaw Live scoured the world for the wackiest news of the week. Yo-Yo and Vanessa. Uh, let's see where we're going. Where do we normally start? The United Kingdom. Nothing, you, uh, nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing wackier than the United Kingdom. A British yeah. man who accidentally threw out a hard drive loaded with Bitcoin has offered the local authority where he lives seventy million dollars if it allows wow. him to excavate the landfill site where the where the laptop is, based on the current oh. rates. He is estimated to be worth $273 million in Bitcoin. And this moron threw out his laptop. If I don't oh know a lot God. about Bitcoin, but 
you have to know the the uh, there's a long thread in order to access your Bitcoin. So if so if you don't know your what is it what is it Julian Julian would know. Yeah, a long blockchain. Thank you very much. There's a long blockchain, which is a long mm -hmm. thread of numbers and letters that goes. There's no way to memorize it. So you have right. it saved on your computer. And this idiot threw it out. He threw out two hundred and seventy three million dollars in Bitcoin. Wow. This guy. Wow. Only in the UK. I, I'm, I'm surprised wow. we don't see him crying. Uh, and, right. <laughs> I would be in tears. Um, <laughs> he is a, he is a IT worker. His name is James Howell. He got rid of the drive, which held a digital store of 7,500 Bitcoins between June and August of 2013. He had originally mined the virtual currency four years earlier when it was of no value. So he got this Bitcoin when it was worthless, but when right. the cryptocurrency shot up in value and he went to search for it, he discovered that he mistakenly threw out the wrong hard drive. Now, with his lost Bitcoin having soared even further, Howell has approached Newport City Council in Wales to ask for permission to dig a specific section of landfill site where he believes the hard drive is. In return, he has offered to pay the council a quarter of the current value of the drive, which he says can be distributed to the local residents. Bitcoins are essentially computer files stored in the digital wallet. That is the, that is the uh, blockchain. Uh, he told CNN, I offered to donate 25%, $71.7 million to the city of Newport. He added this would work out to $239 per person for the entire city, population of 316,000. Unfortunately, they refused. They refused? They refused. So that means that's $273 million down the drain? Right. So now, yo-yo, we can... <laughs> Put on our gloves. Listen, our goggles. Our Listen. goggles. All right. We can put on right, and we can go to where? What town? <laughs> where? Where is this? I guarantee you, people are doing it right now. They are Newport. It's Newport, England. Newport, what, Wales. Newport, Wales. What's up? Okay. <laughs> I guarantee you, there are people there searching for this guy's hard drive because whoever gets it, it's like cash. It's cash. What? You get the hard drive, it's cash, and you walk away with it. You, are you trying to take well, this then. trip? Listen. <laughs> I'm out. I'm with you, Yo-Yo. Take me with you. I will go, in, I will so, go in the dumpster my damn self so, if I have to. So with that, I have a new public service announcement. Bradshaw Live will be off the air for the next 90 days. The three of us will be in Wales <laughs> vacationing. We will be vacationing in Wales. We'll see you back in 90 days. A botched drug operation resulted in banana shipments stashed with cocaine being <laughs> accidentally sent to the local Canadian grocery stores. Police, can you imagine you buy a banana and you get home and you're like, <laughs> you're like powder everywhere? That would be insane. That would be insane. Wow. Police in Kelowna said Tuesday that 21 kilograms 46 pounds of cocaine was shipped from Colombia as part of a failed drug deal. The bananas, they were, they, were, they were hidden in the bananas, and the bananas were shipped to the local grocery stores for sale. Uh, Jeff Carroll, an officer from the Kelowna Royal Canadian Mountain Police, said, Our investigation leads us to believe these illicit drugs were not meant to end up in the grocery store. Uh, the discovery was originally made by workers at a Kelowna grocery store who found 12 packages of cocaine hidden in the bananas. Oh, gosh. That's wild. Is that wild? That Can you is. Imagine you take, you take the banana home, you're like, oh, I'll, put, I'll cut some bananas up for my cereal, and there's like cocaine flying everywhere. Well, I don't think that they're actually selling those bananas, are they? No. Like... <laughs> no. It was, caught, it was caught in the back storage room before they made it out to the... Uh... But can you imagine? Couldn't imagine. Yeah. An amazing lump of volcanic rock was recently discovered in Brazil that looks exactly like Sesame Street's Cookie Monster. <clears throat> the two parts of the rock combine to create a perfect egg shape, uh, but when they are split in half, the deep blue quartz crystals bear an uncanny resemblance to Cookie Monster. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is the wow. rock. That's the rock. Let's go back and look. Oh, wow. That does look like Cookie Monster. What? Yes, that, just like, just like that does look like Cookie Monster. See, this is 
this is some good wacky world news. That is that's a, what I want to see. Like, how does that even right. happen? That is na- that is natural, and it's a cookie monster. Oh. Um, and it, and yeah. it also has a little blue tint to it. You yeah. see that? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, people have said it's the most perfect cookie monster out there. They've seen others, but nothing like this on both sides that look exactly like a cookie monster. According to Britannia.com, uh, the rock is a get a got a gate a g a t e. What kind of rock is that? It's a blue, hey, deep hey. blue quartz crystal. It's a semi precious. It's a semi precious mineral, and it's a type of quartz. An Adobe Flash player shut down recently, and it caused chaos for Chinese railroads for over 20 hours. Back in 2017, Adobe had announced that it would officially be deactivating its Flash by the end of 2020. But sometime early this month on January 12th, Adobe had finally carried out with its non-negotiable plan <clears throat> to deactivate Flash installations all around the world. You know Adobe Flash, right? So however, yep. Yep. apparently officials at the China Railway didn't get the memo because they had used Flash-based software to plan each day's railroad operations. As a result of this particular outage, uh, the entire Chinese railroads had to close down led to a complete shutdown of its railroads over Dalian, Liang province. I guess it's two provinces, not all of China. After about a day of chaos, the railroad was able to find a temporary solution as it obtained a pirated version of the Adobe Flash Player. There were observers that pointed out that the railroad officials should have anticipated this would happen and develop an alternative non-Flash dispatching system. They had three years to come up with a plan. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.